Hi guys, it's the Power BI guy and today I'm going to show you the best way to write if statements in Power BI using switch. But let's take it back. What is a nested if? So when you have multiple conditions and when we say if this then return this, then if this return this, etc. As we build up that logic, that's referred to as a nested if. This can get really messy to read and it's quite difficult to maintain. We can start to use a switch function, which is a lot cleaner to understand and actually do. So let's go over that in this video where we do a normal if and then convert that to a nested if statement. So let's start off with how to write an if statement. So this is not the optimized way or most readable way using switch, but how do we write an if statement? So we have the subcategory column and we want to say, if it's paper, then show office supplies. If it's machines, show equipment. And if it's chairs, show furniture. So I'm going to create a calculated column and let's just write an if statement. Let's go to call this category and we're going to say if the subcategory um, equals paper, then return office. If the subcategory equals machines, then show equipment. So we have our condition. So we're saying if the sub subcategory equals machine, show equipment, else check the next if. And the next if is subcategory equals chairs, then show furniture. Or if that none of those conditions are met, then just show blank. And we can see we have our if statement. So chairs is showing furniture, etc. But as this scrolls and we start to write out our conditions, this can become really messy to maintain. So this is where we can use switch, where we're just looking at a single column and we want to look at some values and replace them. So how do we do this with switch, which is a lot more readable and more efficient? So what I'm going to do is create a new column and this time let's call this switch C, standing for category. And we can just write switch and then specify the column that we want to look inside. So subcategory. And then we're going to say in that column, if it contains paper, show office. If it says machines, then show equipment. And if it shows chairs, return furniture. And then if there's none of those criteria have been met, return blank. And we can see we're getting the exact same result. So already when we start comparing the two, a nested if versus a switch, it's a lot easier to read. And you can imagine as we build out our conditions, this is a lot better to read just from sort of handing over and just writing our code perspective. But this is a very basic scenario where we're looking at a single column and then changing the values based on if it matches. So in the switch, we're saying, look inside this column. But what if we have condition? So this is where we get a little bit more advanced, where we might have ranges. So we're not looking inside a specific column and it's just for a certain value. We're saying, look inside that column for a certain range or certain condition to be met. Well, let's delete these two columns and then try do that using if, and then it won't work with switch. We have to add something to it, but we'll get to that in a moment. So I'm going to just write this as an if statement so you can understand, but let's call this volume. We're going to say if the quantity sold is less than two, show low volume. If the quantity sold is less than 10, show uh, medium, medium volume. Oh. Otherwise, show blank. And we can see we've returned that result and we're getting true or false. Why are we getting true or false? Oh, it's because I put that there instead of a comma. And now we're getting our results. So we've got medium volume and low volume. So we said if this condition has been met, then show low volume. Otherwise, next condition, etc. If we try to do this with a switch, however, by itself, it's not going to work. So if we did switch and then did uh, quantity sold and then did less than two, and then we just return low volume for now, this is going to throw an error. So well, the reason it's going to throw an error is because switch by itself in the expression, it's just looking for a single column. It's not looking at a condition. What the first value was before was this column, comma, and then check for this value, otherwise return this result. But now we need to evaluate a condition where if this condition is true, so if this condition has been met, then return this. So we can't do that with a switch by itself. This is where we have to add in true. So if we return this now, add the comma. So if we do switch true, we're now saying switch. So check this column and then this condition. So if this condition is true, then return this result. Otherwise return blank. So over here we can see it's less than two. That condition is have been met. So it's returning blank. But then what if we did another condition now as well, where we said if it's less than 10. 
Well, let's do if it's less than six. So if we do um, quantity sold again, and then we did this less than six, return medium volume. And then otherwise return blank. Well, we can see now everything is returning a medium volume, but we've got these two which are showing low. Well, this we have to think about this. This condition has been met. So we say switch, and if this condition is met, return low volume. So this condition has been met, but when we have six, this is less than six. So why is it showing medium? Why is it not showing medium then? Because this condition is true. Well, the reason is true works, it works in an order. So the first condition has already been met. So it doesn't have to check through the next condition. So it's less than two, true. So it doesn't have to check that uh, next condition. Over here, we can see it's been met. So it returned, um, if this is not less than two, this is two, so it's returning medium volume. If we change this to less than two or equals, that will show low. So we can see that this first condition has been met, it equals two, hence why it's showing low volume, and it's not going on to the next condition. So the order of your conditions really does matter. So if we change this, so if we went to uh, a greater than one, or if we did, sorry, if we did less than 10, and then change this one to less than five. Well, you would think that if it didn't follow the condition, it would always go to medium volume. But because there's an order, the first condition has been met via the true, hence why they're all returning low volume. So that is essentially how we start to build out our logic and get a lot more advanced with switch and uh, true to do our conditions. And we could break this down and do as many as we wanted to, and it's a lot more easier to read. So another top tip that I'm going to share, another top tip that I'm going to share, if you're doing a condition where we want to look inside a column, so let's go inside subcategory. And then we say equals chairs, return uh, furniture. So then you might want to do another condition for furniture. So you might say subcategory equals, um, you might say, let's say storage equals furniture as well. You can see we're starting to repeat ourselves a lot more often when we have the same condition or the same result that we want. Well, we don't have to repeat these conditions. Well, what we could do is just use the in statement. So we can say, if subcategory in chair, in storage, and then we're now specifying in a single row, and then we want this to return furniture. Else we can go into our next condition where we can say subcategory equals, uh, let's say machines. And we want that to show equipment, otherwise blank. So we can already see now this in statement has reduced our line and it's a lot easier to maintain. We don't have to, if we wanted to add another condition, we could do so very easily. So if we did furnishings and put that there, furnishings will appear. So that's another way to optimize your DAX code for readability, not necessarily, not necessarily performance. So it's the Power BI guy and hopefully this video has helped and I'm checking out.